Hey, what's going on? It's Glendon Cameron, founder of HustlersKungFu.com. Hey, below each and every video is some insanely helpful information. Check it out. All right, today we're going to talk about mindset. Was having this conversation, I should say, engaged in this conversation. I'm not going to get to the topic because it doesn't matter. Because what I want to talk to you about is mindset. You have people who, I don't care how much evidence is given to them that X to the Y to the Z doesn't work out, that they will still operate on pure emotion. No logic um, to even be had. It's just, this is what I want. It should work out. And it's just a false narrative. If you're operating on false narratives and you get undesirable results, whose fault is that? Something you have to think about. If you continue to behave as if things aren't the way that they are, and then when those things bite you in the ass, once again, who, who who's to blame? Because... You know, not too long ago, I had someone arguing with me over personal responsibility on this channel. And that's what it boils down to. When you're young, you have all the excuses in the world to be ignorant. You're young. You don't know anything. Maybe you grew up in a bad situation. Nobody's helping you out. Nobody's giving you good mentorship or guidance. But once you reach a certain age and you remain ignorant, that's on you. It's not on anyone else. That is on you. That is your baggage. That is your package. That is something that you own. But you get people who just refuse to accept that. Now, when I say mindset, I don't know how to break it down to you where you really understand how critical, how important mindset is in each and everything that you do. It is so critical. It is so important. You, I mean, I, I don't even have an example because sometimes they get exasperated because people are looking for shortcuts and people are looking for this push button solution or this turnkey solution where they really don't have to work that hard. Or, they're looking at someone else's life without breathing that air. You can't look at someone else's success and hope that's going to be yours because typically you're not going to get all the information. You can reverse engineer only so much. And that's one of the things I learned in sales. When you are not privy to the right information, it is hard to make better decisions. It is hard. It is daunting. And I see many people who are um, who research successful people. Now, I suggest that you should research successful people. But at some point, you've got to take that research and put it in that place where the rubber meets the road. You've got to put it into effect. And once again, that, that's mindset. Because... I have uh, experienced some things in my life that people said weren't going to happen, but I put it in my mind that it was going to happen, and I, I clung to it, and there were some days, you know, you get weak, you have days where you don't believe, you have days you don't want to work as hard, but you have to keep your mind straight and focused on that aim, because if you don't, the power of negativity is so strong, it can just take you out with a quickness. And that's one of the things that happens because as we go forward in life, more opportunities are given to us and more things are required from us. That's just how it is. And many people, I think, do not want to deal with with all of the changes that will come from success. And that's the mindset because right now, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, there's a certain um, 
level of ment mental inertia. A certain thing that's just this person is driving crazy. There's just a certain mental inertia. You'll get to a certain point and you'll stop. And the reason isn't because you don't have the ability is you have not adjusted your mindset for the next stage. That is really, really critical when you are trying to be successful of taking your mindset to the next level. Because as long as you keep your mindset at level C, you may want to go to level A, but your mindset is at level C. It's going to stay there, and that's where you're going to stay, at level C. You have to constantly push and expand what you're going to do, how you're going to do it, and the things that you're creating for yourself. I'll give you a great example about mindset. For a long, long time, I was a reseller. Loved it, enjoyed it. It actually got me the opportunity to speak to you in these videos. And it's great, and it's wonderful. But I moved on. And that was a personal decision. Now, I've heard stuff that I've abandoned the reseller community, like we were married, and that's my boo. I, I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute. <clears throat> Just because you can't move on, why shouldn't I move on? This is a mindset lesson, and this is about tribalism, because one thing about resellers, it becomes very, very almost cultish. The deeper, the more successful you are, the deeper you get. And I, I'll give you an example. There's a guy here in Atlanta named Dave. Dave was killing it. But fortunes changed. You know, Dave was doing it when it was just the flea markets and stores only. And he didn't adjust to the internet. <laughs> And then he started to start to lose. I mean, at one point, Dave was strong. Dave won all the units. Dave had the ability, the resources, the infrastructure to buy, move, and sell all of the units. You couldn't do anything with him. But he did not adapt. He did not move his mindset from level C to level A. And, you know, eventually he lost it all because he did not improve his mindset. He lost it all, had a 10,000. I mean, he was a guy that I modeled part of my business from because I remember we were out at an auction and he was just talking about, you know, I get all this pretty shit now because, you know, in a few months you ain't gonna be able to buy it. Took that information and I kept it and then I got myself a warehouse. <laughs> it was very, very important. And once again, when you were successful, it becomes very hard for you to change your mindset. And that's what happened to Dave. And he's, he's out of the game. I mean, he's really dialed it back. So if you are so, I'm going to do X, Y, and Z forever, and that's cool. If that's something you got passion for, if you love it, that's cool. But one thing I've noticed about people who are really overall successful, it's very hard for these people to hate. It's really, really hard for these people to go out and hate on other people. And, and, the, and the reason is, when you're successful and you're happy in all of those areas, such as, you know, you, you, you have the time that you want. You have the freedom that you want. You have the money that you want. Your family line, all that stuff is clicking. All of those cylinders are hitting hard. It's just really not worth your time to be a hater or to always go out and call attention to X, Y, and Z because essentially it's just a lack of happiness, I think that creates a great deal of hate because when you have people who are just out there hating and once again, this is about mindset because it's very easy to get sucked into the vortex of hate because hate is seductive. It's very, very seductive and it creates a lot of energy. Hate, love, pain, all that creates energy. And hate creates an abundance of energy that many people don't know what to do with because they'll get in a situation 
And you know, I've seen it. I've seen it on YouTube. People get caught up in hate fest. And they, they really didn't mean to go as far as they did, but they got caught up. Once again, it's about your mindset. When you fill your mind with positive things, good things like, you know, when you eat better, your body performs better. When you, you consume better mental food, you have better outcomes. That a lot of this stuff just can't take root in you. There's just no room for it. There's just, there's just no way for it to to for those seeds to be planted and for them to continue to grow in you because you are watching your environment. You're you're, you're really being a good manager of your mental environment. And that is very, very important that you do that. And then once again, with the mindset, how you think, how you interpret stuff, how you deal with happiness, how you deal with um, you know, setbacks and uh, failure, that stuff's very, very important because everyone's going to be unhappy at some point. Everyone's going to fail at some point. It's just going to happen. And that's just a snapshot. That's a moment. But some people will take a snapshot and turn it into a feature film. One bad thing happens, and you see this romantically a lot. Someone gets hurt. Oh, never love again. Oh, never get married again. They've turned a snapshot into a movie. Or sometimes they'll turn it into a series or sequels. Or they'll just... It, it, it's sad. Because essentially you're allowing today's events to predicate your future happiness when you have a choice on how that goes down. You have a very large choice in that. But once again, if you don't have <clears throat> the proper mindset, you may not even think that you have a choice. You may just think that you got to take it and deal with it versus uh, putting your mind on the, the right things, working hard. And you know, let's talk about that because I've been seeing some crazy stuff, crazy stuff lately um, in terms of the use of certain verbiage, such as personal responsibility and working hard. And I'm going to tell you something. If you, as a person, turn off the internet or, you know, really, really govern what you watch on the internet, and you come off Facebook, and this is a challenge, I'll, I'll listen to you. Come off Facebook 90%. I'm not saying completely turn it off, but reduce your Facebook time by 90% unless it's business oriented. And, you know, if it's business oriented, that's fine. But cut it by 90%. Also, stop listening to certain negative things. Don't hang out with it. And focus, take that time that you were on Facebook and put it into successful endeavors and do that for 90 days then get back to me and tell me how right I am because I've seen people get caught up in the negative loop of bullshit like right now like I said you know once again I'm not going to talk about social issues on this channel I probably will crank that up on my other channel once I do that I'll let you know but I see people discussing certain things that will not make them happy, will not provide them with freedom, will not improve their life, will not improve their health, will not put money in, and go at it so hard and with so much vigor. And then when you look at them, you're like, what the hell happened to you? I mean, seriously, what, what the hell happened to you that you're living like this? And then if you want to see how a person is living, Look at where they put their time. I'm an internet marketer. I put my time in YouTube, Facebook, creating products. That's what I do. And the more time that I invest there, and I learn those lessons and I get the feedback, the more money I make, the more freedom I have, the more happiness I have. But if I were to get sucked into the pitfalls and the cesspools of negativity, and there's many of them, I mean, there's one on YouTube that I am watching with a great degree of glee consume the instigator. Started a whole bunch of stuff. Now all of it's coming back and rolling back on him, and he can't handle it. He freaks out. It's just like, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. 
And see, this is the thing. Anytime someone says, hey, I'm trying to give you constructive criticism, and they do it in the open forum, they're not trying to give you constructive criticism. They're trying to shit on you and hate on you. When I was a manager, and whenever I had a problem with an employee or somebody, I wouldn't go out and dress them down in front of everybody. First of all, that makes people very defensive. Second, it makes it reduces your power. I know it's like, wait, wait, you just went off on some. No, it reduces your power because people don't trust you, and they're like, shit, he did that to him. He gonna do it to me. So what I would do would take him aside, bring him in the office, or sometimes I would meet him outside of work because environment is huge, and then like, okay, this is the deal. This is the deal. And most of the time, it was cool. The behavior was corrected, and we went on. That's how you give constructive criticism. If I see somebody on Facebook doing something stupid, I don't put it in the comments. I'll hit them in the inbox and look, hey, that actually is a, you know, from the onion, which is a satire site. That's not real. Oh, well, sometimes I'll put that in the comment, like, hey, you know, this isn't real. Just letting you know. There's a way that you can give, quote, constructive criticism. And typically, when you see people are doing certain things, it lets you know their professional development because you know many people will talk to me about being a professional when they have no idea what a professional is i make no claims of being a professional internet marketer i have another company that i started where i behave totally differently because i am a professional there but here i be myself and i understand that there's a cost there's a cost to being yourself in the society when you haven't done it long term or have created an environment where you can be yourself because there are some folks you know uh, you see how they really are and you would not like them <laughs> you wouldn't want to be with them and that's just the reality and man this is some ridiculous traffic so early in the day but hey this happens <laughs> this really happens but don't believe in false narratives and also do your own work you gotta do your own work you, you have to investigate what you're talking about what you believe in this stuff you've got to really really open up your mind and learn to decipher what's real and what's not real I got a uh, comment the other day about one of the reasons I listen to you is because you piss me off all the time with your brutal honesty. So I don't get that anywhere else. Okay, this is insane. What are you trying to do? Craziness. Craziness, craziness. So that's the kind of stuff that happens, but definitely if you are interested in improving your mindset i'm going to put a special deal here at the end of the video just for you just link right to it you can work on that tonight and also i am starting the local meetups again but very very different this time now if you're a member of hustlers kung fu i've already sent out the email hopefully you read it that you will not have to pay what street people will have to pay and just to be real clear, if you're a member of Hustle Kung Fu, it'll be like 15 bucks or 20 or some cases, <clears throat> nothing because it just depends upon how much I have to pay to secure the venue. Some places I can get next to nothing. So if I can get it really cheap as a small group, you won't have to pay anything. If it's a larger place and I have to make reservations, put down deposits, I will keep it as economical as possible, but I'm talking like 10 to $30 or something like that. And that would be for the venue and possibly food if food is served. That's what that would be for. But for the training, <laughs> you get that as a part of membership. So just letting you know that. And with the new meetup group, you just can't join. I had I started that early this year. No, really, it was last year. Actually, it was last year, 2014. And I learned a few things. Well, this is a this is paid training. <laughs> Hold on a second. <laughs> Excuse me. This meetup group will not be a networking event. 
this meetup group will not be about, you know, what's, you know, there will be an agenda and there will be a course. Essentially, I'm going to take courses from hustleskungfu.com, some there, some from other things that I'm doing, and I'm going to do a live class about that course. So it's going to be training. That's why, you know, if you're a member of hustleskungfu.com, you get the course. You already have access and you'll only have to pay to attend the venue for the live training. And will I record it? Don't know that's possible in the future but in the beginning we're just going to run it raw i expect small groups maybe five ten people which means you get to ask a lot of questions you get that one-on-one -on -one interaction if you're a local so i'll put the link below how you can now the thing is you cannot just join the meetup group um right now i have it as a hundred dollar a month fee yes 100 bucks a month and if i have two meetups you can come to both meetups. So you pay that fee, that's your, that covers everything. That's for those folks who are not a member of HustlersKungFu.com. And I'm just doing it a certain way because I want this group to be successful. And I've been to a, uh, quite a few meetup events and typically they'll start off strong and then they'll winter down because there's no direction, there's uh, poor acoustics, maybe the group's too big, maybe the group's too small, maybe... There's so many things that I'm trying to eliminate. Note the word try. You know, it's a process. It's uh, something we're going to be working on. Okay. So that's definitely. But the links and the annotations, all that stuff will be here. Oh, yeah. New blog I'm starting. Took, I finally, you know, did, took the first steps. It's very naked. It's going to be very simple. Hustlers, you know, blog.hustlerskungfu.com. Real simple. So some stuff will be there, some real cool stuff. And uh, I think that's about it. Just make sure that you keep your mindset right. And uh, we will start getting hot and heavy in November.